Hello and welcome to EWTN Vatican. My name is Andreas Stonehauser and I'm the Vatican Bureau Chief here in Rome. We want to present to you the latest news and the stories behind the scenes of the Holy See here in this eternal city. And you can follow all of those stories on our YouTube channel and the other social media channels. Please make sure to subscribe. Also subscribe to our email and you will receive a weekly update on everything that is going on here in Rome. When the Vatican Apostolic Archive is spoken of, many think of a dark, sad place located beneath the city, far from everything and everyone. If we add the qualification of the archive as secret, the image becomes darker still, as if among its walls it hid prohibited documents and inconfessible sins of the church and even of the popes. There is no secret, because the name secretum in Latin means private. The archives preserve our dirty laundry, and anyone who wants to discover the truth, they are more than welcome uh, to come here and discover it. The history that is conserved in the Apostolic Archive isn't a church. It isn't always a clean history. It's also a history where sin is present. During this special episode of Vaticano, we'll travel with Father Mitch Paquin through the history of the Apostolic Archive. Visit those places that for centuries have jealously guarded the documentary treasures of the life of the pontiffs and of the governance of the church. We'll meet the protagonists of its history and we'll speak with those people who today zealously carry on the mission of this institution. That is the respectful and methodical cultivation of the memory, both of the history of the Church of Rome and its intimate encounter with the men of all times, without distinguishing between race or religion. All of this and much more coming up on Vaticano. We'll find out what the secret is. Beyond the Leonine walls that trace the borders of the Vatican City stands the Apostolic Archive. Placed more than 400 years ago in the Apostolic Palace, the Archive of the Popes peeks timidly out at the Cortile del Belvedere. The area dedicated to this institution begins below the Cortile della Pina with a two-story underground bunker 
and advances along the Pius IV wing up to the Tower of the Winds, one of the highest points in the pontifical state. And it's precisely here where we begin our voyage in the office of the Cardinal Archivist and Librarian. His Eminence, Jose Tolentino de Mendoza, receives us and invites us to get to know the marvels and peculiarities of the archive of the pontiffs. Eminence, thank you very much for allowing us to do this presentation on the archives, the apostolic archives. We are very, very happy to do this, and it's very interesting. I have to say that the joy and honor is truly ours. We are thankful for this opportunity that you are giving us to present this reality. In this program, we're speaking especially of the Vatican Apostolic Archives, which is a reality truly at the heart of the mission of Peter and the Universal Church. So many historians of different backgrounds, men and women of culture, who are searching with a bit of curiosity, some with preconceived ideas, come to the archives and the apostolic library. And in everyone, I see this reaction. They enter within and there is a huge silence because they understand this. The church takes humanity seriously. For more than 400 years, the search for the truth has animated the spirit of the Vatican Apostolic Archive. It's a shared mission for all those who have participated, in greater or lesser part, in the centuries-old life of this institution. From the researchers to the technicians in the restoration and photography labs, to the professors of the School of Archivists, all the way up to the very prefect, Bishop Sergio Pagano, who in complete harmony with the Cardinal Librarian, follows the day-to-day -day activities of the archive. With our documents, which are so many, one can prove, one can certainly come closer to the truth of that which has been the history of the papacy, the history of the church on so many continents, in the nations, in so many centuries of history. Naturally, there are defects and merits. Grace and sin coexist in the church. From a practical point of view, the Apostolic Archive is an instrument of governance at the service of the Pope, of the Holy See, and of the Curia, in addition to being a source of knowledge at the service of humanity. But what makes this archive a unique reality in its genre is the chronological continuity of the documentary heritage that spans more than 12 centuries and the geographical extension of said documentation that embraces every continent. Taking advantage of our encounter with Bishop Sergio Pagano, we were able to get a close look at the treasures that make this archive one of the most important document centers in the world. We have some more important documents, some significant documents like this. This is from Queen Helen of China, sent to the Pope in 1650. This is the imperial seal. After her conversion to Christianity, she took the name Helen just like the mother of Constantine, remembering the name from Christian tradition. It's written on very fine silk, you can see here, with the imperial dragon all around it, in which she thanks the Pope for the sending of Jesuit missionaries to China. This is a rather very important document because it is the trial of the Knights Templar. This is the so-called Shinan parchment, that is the condemnation of the Grand Master of the Knights Templar in the castle of Shinan for heresy. And naturally, then came all the success of trial and the condemnation of Grand Master Jean de Molay to the gallows and the suppression of the order by the French king. This is a very important document. 
Here, on the other hand, we have another important document, Henry VIII's letter from 1530 to Clement VII to ask for the annulment of his marriage to be able to wed Anne Boleyn. Naturally, the sovereign, to impress the Pope, made all the members of the High Chamber of the English Parliament seal the letter, so each placed his signature and respective seal at the place that was his. Of course, the document did not obtain the annulment of the marriage, so you could say that this document is at the origin of the Anglican schism in a certain way. Today, the Apostolic Archive has 62 employees, more than 650 archive collections, and a total of 85 kilometers of documents. Vatican Apostolic Archive is a consolidated reality for which it's difficult to stop and think of its origins. It's as if it has always existed, but as is evident, that's not how it is. In reality, the Pope's archive, as we know it today in its modern version, was born in 1611, thanks to the intuition of Pope Paul V Borghese. In an historic moment in which the Protestant Reformation strongly questioned the legitimacy of the Catholic Church and the See of Peter, the Borghese Pope, a jurist and man of culture, saw the systematic and structured creation of a personal archive as the perfect weapon to fight against those who threatened the very foundations of the Church of Rome. That's how the new archive was born, initially placed in the Pauline Room next to the Vatican Library. From that moment, the archive grew rapidly, and the space in the library was no longer sufficient. In 1613, Paul V decided to definitively establish the archive on the first floor of the Pius IV wing, known as the Piano Nobile in the Apostolic Palace. composed of three contiguous rooms, furnished with wooden wardrobes, decorated with the heraldic symbols of the Borghese family, the winged dragon and the crowned eagle. The three spaces were adorned with fresco paintings, following a very precise iconographic motif, the proclamation of the universal supremacy of the Pope of Rome over the representatives of secular power. Years passed and the documentary heritage of the archives quickly grew. In 1630, Pope Urban VIII recognized the necessity of definitively separating the secret archive from the Vatican Library, and he declared their total autonomy from each other. In 1660, Pope Alexander VII Kiji decided to increase the space dedicated to the archive, and he inaugurated the Kijin Rooms, located just above the Piano Nobile. After the French occupation of the city of Rome in 1798 and the confiscation of the papal archives by Napoleonic troops in 1810, the moment arrived that would definitively change the face of the Vatican secret archive. In 1881, Pope Leo XIII opened the doors of the archive to researchers from the entire world without regard to race or religious creed. Our task is precisely that of fostering serious, objective historical research by all, even atheists, even Muslims, even non-Catholics. As long as it is serious historical research with the scientific method, the Church truly has a passion for humanity, and this passion is present here in a palpable way. We have documents that show this love of the Church for humanity. 
Another relevant moment in the history of the archive was the inauguration of the storeroom under the courtyard known as the Cortile de la Pina in 1980 by St. John Paul II. It was a project started by St. Paul VI that included the construction of two underground repositories with a total of 31,000 cubic meters of capacity and 43 kilometers of shelves. The last stage of our brief voyage through the history of the Apostolic Archive takes us right up to 2019, when Pope Francis decided to change the adjective secret to apostolic, a decision that for some was revolutionary and for others unnecessary. But in reality, it takes us back to the origins of the institution as it began to be referred to as the Vatican's secret archive only in 1646, 30 years after its foundation. Pope Francis wished to clarify the name and say, secretum is a cinnamon of apostolic. The term apostolic has this double meaning. It has the sense of belonging that this is the archive of the popes but it is also apostolic in the sense of the verb apostolian, to send in mission. And truly, this is a frontier of mission. The archive is at the service of the mission of the church. After a quick passage through the history of the Vatican Apostolic Archive, the moment has arrived to speak of the present. This pontifical institution counts on different realities, sometimes little known, that allow it to carry out its mission day after day. Among them stand out the Conservation, Restoration and Binding Laboratory, which ensures the survival over time of the documentary heritage of the Archive of the Pope. And the Vatican School of Paleography, Diplomatics and Archives Administration, which guarantees the qualified formation of new generations. All right then, let's begin the third stage of our voyage with a visit to the Conservation, Restoration and Binding Laboratory. Buongiorno. What's the difference between preservation and restoring? La conservazione... Conservation is all of the operations that serve to impede an eventual degradation of our cultural assets, whether they be ancient furniture, books, documents or paintings, while restoration, on the other hand, is the practical intervention of an operator precisely on the object to carry out the repair of degradations that have already taken place. Can you show us some of the work that the people do here? Uh, show us examples of what they're doing here. In questo caso, yes, in this case, Maurizio isn't restoring ancient documents, but is rebinding digitized mm -hmm. documents so they are new. But it is always useful to preserve the old ones because, in this case, mm -hmm. it is an index. The indices are absolutely the most highly consulted documents in this archive because they are necessary for researchers to understand what they must search for, what there is. And here? In this case, our colleague is working on an original, for precision's sake. They are recordings. 
It's a Lateran recording that has suffered some vicissitudes over time. We're talking about the end of the 1300s up to Leo XIII at the end of the 1800s. They're in these conditions. In this case, it suffered degradation due to water. It got wet. After the encounter with the artisans of the laboratory, we're heading to the Vatican School of Paleography, Diplomatics and Archives Administration, where Professor Luca Carboni awaits us. He's Professor of Archival Science at the school founded in 1881 by Pope Leo XIII. The archive forms paleographer archivists that will one day be able to precisely go to make source editions or transcriptions of documents. But the archive school forms as well archivists, that is, people who perhaps will never make source editions but will be archivists. That is, they will go on to bring order in a very practical way, getting their hands dirty on the shelves of the archives, the complex of papers that they will find before them and describe them for the historians who will study the papers. Today, the principal objective of the Pope's archive is precisely the digitization of the documentary heritage. It's a costly process, not only in economic terms, but also in hours of work, due to the difficulty of digitizing a continuously growing documentary heritage. The digitization of the documents is fundamental. On the one hand, it's fundamental to one day truly allow for the vastest access to the cultural heritage of the church by all. But the digitization also has a fundamental task in the safeguarding and conservation of the documents. The enormous problem is what to digitize, how and when. Why don't we digitize the medieval documents? Great, but often the medieval documents are written on parchment and I can assure you, we have parchments in the archives that are over a thousand years old and can still be read. They've been preserved from over a thousand years ago. We have all of the paper documentations of the 1900s. But let's think about telegrams, faxes, documentation on chemical paper. That's a huge problem. But is a document perhaps from the Second World War, a thin veil that within 20 years may not be able to be read anymore, less important historically than a medieval document? So what should we digitize first? And then the biggest problem with digitization is surely the cost and the time. And it's precisely to face this difficult situation that the Treasures of History Foundation was born under the supervision of Monsignor Lawrence Spiteri. Thanks to the generosity of a group of U.S. benefactors, the Foundation seeks the necessary funds to guarantee the survival of the treasures of the archives. My role is, uh, I've been asked by the Holy Father and Cardinal Mendonca, who is archivist and also librarian, to set up a foundation called the Treasures of History Foundation. Mm -hmm. And that is earmarked at uh, assisting the archives in bringing into reality important projects, protect what's in the archives themselves. Some of them are uh, over 1,100 years old, and also improving uh, the situation. Uh, this is done by the generosity of Americans, and the foundation uh, actually is situated in Atlanta. It's a pure American foundation. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one in the Vatican who relates to it. I'm its CEO. The rest are cardinals, bishops, archbishops, and the majority laypersons mm -hmm. who live and work in the United States. end our voyage where we started, in the Tower of the Winds, one of the most famous buildings in Vatican City. Built in 1580 by the architect of the Apostolic Palace, Ottaviano Mascherino, 
This bulwark is the property of the Vatican Apostolic Archive. The tower was used as an astronomical observatory during the reform of the calendar promoted by Pope Gregory XIII. It was precisely in the Meridian Hall where the Gregorian calendar was demonstrated that we continue to use today. This room owes its name to the meridian in the marble embedded in the pavement. This room was dedicated to observation of the sky. And of course it is breezy, which is usually quite nice. On the floor, we can see uh, the, some of the material that was used for calculating various aspects of the movement of the sun. And also up above, they have an, in, a way to measure some of the movements of the sun. The frescoes that adorn the walls of the Meridian Hall are not by chance, but they follow a very precise iconographic motif, biblical scenes in which the wind plays a fundamental role. The painting on the west wall narrates shipwreck of St. Paul in Malta. On the south wall, Jesus calms a storm and heals the Gerasene demoniac. And in the center, the scene of the angel seals the forehead of the saved from the book of the Apocalypse. Finally, the paintings on the vault illustrate the allegories of the seasons. Before concluding our voyage, let's stop in to bid farewell to our host at the Vatican Apostolic Archive, Cardinal Jose Tolentino de Mendoza, archivist and librarian of Holy Roman Church. I would like to represent the rest of the church in thanking you for continuing the work that had begun with monks centuries past, but you continue to this day. Thank you and everybody who works here. Uh, we visited many of them, very impressive people. Grazie per il vostro interesse. Thank you for your interest. We ask you to continue to have this love this interest for the Apostolic Archive and to place in your heart this beautiful mission of the Universal Church that the successor of Peter maintains. Grazie. Grazie mille.